Warning! This video contains manga-only spoilers relating to recent developments of chapter 1017. You've been warned! Hello my Nakamatachi, this is Joy Girl with a video to discuss the Gomu Gomu no Mi. And before we begin, please like this video to help with the algorithm and don't forget to subscribe for more One Piece discussions like this one. Now, if you've read the latest One Piece chapter, then your mind is probably filled with so many questions like mine. Because in the latest chapter, some revelations were uncovered. Numerous revelations in fact, but none bigger than Who's Who's identity and his connection to chapter 1. Yes, chapter 1 of One Piece because it concerns the Gomu Gomu no Mi, which our main protagonist is currently in possession of. And something overlooked with this reveal is that this gives Jinbei's matchup more importance as he now needs to stop not just one of Kaido's officers, but a man who has a direct grudge against his captain. Quite a perfect first matchup storyline as an official straw hat for our whale shark. However, the fact that this has been overlooked is understandable considering how shocking of a reveal this is and what it means to the series. So the reveal was that 12 years ago, the Gomu Gomu no Mi was on a government ship being guarded by Who's Who, current member of the Tobiropo and then member of the CP9. Now back in chapter 1, Lucky Ru mentioned that the Gomu Gomu no Mi was taken from an enemy ship. However, it is unknown whether Shanks' crew stole the fruit directly from Who's Who, or if it was taken and was in possession of another party before ending up with the red-haired pirates. But from what we've seen, we can infer that Shanks' crew had prior knowledge of the fruit and its uses. The red-haired pirates already possessed a drawing of the fruit, referred to it by name, and immediately knew the effect of consuming the fruit. Although this knowledge could be attributed to them reading up on it in the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, Shanks' involvement and significant ties to many significant figures makes this somewhat unlikely. One thing is for certain though, and that is, the government clearly heavily valued the fruit as evidenced by the CP9 being assigned to guard it, and the fact that Who's Who's failure in escorting the fruit led to his imprisonment. And because of all of this, a big question looms. Why did the world government punish one of their most promising agents over a mishap? Is the Gomu Gomu no Mi that important? If so, what makes this fruit so special? A paramecia devil fruit that turns the user's body into rubber, Luffy has stretched the utility of the Gomu Gomu no Mi beyond imagination, even developing gears in the process. Which has always been considered as a testament to Luffy's own hard work and ability to maximize the potential of the fruit, rather than a reflection of the fruit's powers itself. But could there be more to this fruit than has been portrayed so far? During the live reaction stream, I shared a small detail on a theory I've had for a while in regards to the giant straw hat at Marajoa, and that is that the hat relates to Luffy and the Gomu Gomu no Mi, or more accurately, the previous owner of this devil fruit. The idea is that since we've seen Luffy inflate parts of his body, initially with his limbs and now expanded to his entire upper body as seen when he transforms into his gear fault form, this progression we've seen from Luffy could suggest that the previous owner of the Gomu Gomu no Mi, if there indeed was one, maximized the fruit's ability to its full potential, wherein they were able to inflate their rubber body to be bigger than a normal human's. The size of which could be either rival to that of a giant, or big enough in proportion to the hat seen at Marajoa. Yes, this will make the previous owner of the fruit the very same person who once wore the giant hat. Like I said, this giant hat theory is a working theory and a giant theory at that, so that's about all that I'll share of it for now. Maybe I'll share the theory at another milestone, maybe when the channel reaches 50,000 subs. So if you want to hear the theory, then you gotta help the channel's growth. But as this video is focused on the Gomu Gomu no Mi specifically, we'll revolve around this topic. So the recent reveal and who's whose words suggest that the world government had extensive knowledge of the fruit and what it's capable of. We know that the world government was in the process of creating giants, an experiment that started in Punk Hazard 20 years before the main storyline. Aware of the full extent of the Gomu Gomu no Mi's ability, could this fruit have been a part of one of the world government's early attempts in their mission to recreate these larger-than-life beings? Experimenting around the property of a material that expands sounds like a good place to start an experiment that involves… well, expanding. And that could be a major reason why the world government wanted to get their hands on the devil fruit, which brings up another question. Did the world government just spend their time and send their best agents in search for the fruit? Or perhaps, they found a way to create one themselves. 
Going back to Punk Hazard where we discussed the world government's process of recreating giants, this experiment however is only one of many things that we've seen being recreated. However, out of all of these, the one that we remember the most, which is very relevant to the recent arc, is the experimentation of man-made devil fruits. A lot of discussion has been had in relation to Momonosuke's devil fruit, which was originally considered a failure, but this negative status is now being questioned. We've brought up the idea that perhaps Momonosuke's devil fruit is not a failure after all. But what if this is not the only successful attempt at recreating devil fruits? After all, it was in the very same chapter as the Gomu Gomu no Mi reveal that we were also provided the name for the group which potentially contained the greatest scientific minds in the series. Based on the information previously given to us, recreating a devil fruit requires a sample from a pre-existing devil fruit user. Sure, so far we've only seen the artificial devil fruits that are Zoan types which was hinted to be possible because of the effect of the fruit on the user's lineage factor, However, if we were to look deeper into the methods of both Vegapunk and Caesar Clown, it's hard to rule out the idea that the better scientist might have been able to achieve further success. Caesar Clown's mass production of Smile Devil Fruits were created by utilizing the lineage factor of regular animals. Vegapunk, on the other hand, utilized the lineage factor of the Devil Fruit user himself in Kaido to develop his man-made Devil Fruit. This difference in method could suggest or make another idea possible. Perhaps the potential successful devil fruit of Momonosuke's, modeled after Kaido's, was not merely a result of the changes in Kaido's lineage factor. Perhaps Vegapunk found a method to recreate any type of devil fruit by examining and experimenting on the user itself, regardless of the devil fruit type they possess. If this is the case, we have another question. Did Vegapunk experiment on the previous owner of the fruit? And if so, who was it? If the world government were indeed aware of the existence of the Gomu Gomu no Mi and its ability, then outside of the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, the only way they would hold this knowledge is if they had seen the Devil Fruit in action. There's a theory I came across a while back that the Gomu Gomu no Mi was previously held by Portgast the Rouge, which is the reason why she was able to keep Ace in her womb for more than twice the length of a normal pregnancy. I guess it makes such a task possible if Rouge was able to control the elasticity of her body due to the power of the Gomu Gomu no Mi. However, this will not bode well for our discussion because then the world government would have been aware of who she was and her ability would have been known. Also personally, I like the thought of Rouge's sacrifice as something that she was able to do through sheer willpower, which is really a testament to a mother's love. One of the beauties of One Piece is when we see characters defy the impossible by sheer willpower and providing alternative logical explanations would undermine their sacrifices. Think of Odin's Hour of Legend. It wouldn't be much of a legendary moment if, say, he held the Kira Kira no Mi and was able to cover his body with diamonds during the ordeal. So while we are not considering Rouge as a possible previous owner of the fruit, we can however consider her lover, or you might know him as Pirate King Goldie Roger. Only because a lot of you guys have commented on this, so I would like to explore this one. Adding to this idea, Roger being the previous user of the fruit will continue his parallels with Luffy. And more possible explanations can also be considered. If Shanks gaining the Gomu Gomu no Mi involved an active pursuit on his part, then the idea that his precious previous captain being the owner of the fruit could be the reason for this. Perhaps Shanks knew the potential of this fruit and therefore sought it out so that it doesn't fall into the wrong hands, or maybe it could even be as simple as the fact that Shanks himself wanted to eat it but then a certain hungry village boy thought it was dessert. Whatever the case is, if it does have to do with Roger, then that means like the passing of the straw hat, we are seeing another way of sort of passing the torch between Roger, Shanks and Luffy. We can even add a theory that this devil fruit has some negative effects on the user's lifespan, which is what was thought of as Roger's incurable disease. This could be the case if we were to draw on the explanation provided in Romance Dawn as in the one-shot prototype series as opposed to the first arc of One Piece. Because there, it was explained that the Gomu Gomu no Mi was a fruit which only grows from a mysterious tree every 50 years. So perhaps the user's lifespan is capped to whenever the next time the Gomu Gomu no Mi will be fruited. And maybe this is what sealed Roger's fate to the ripe young age of 53. 
But of course, this is an explanation not adopted by the current One Piece series, so Oda would need to reintroduce the origins of the Gomu Gomu no Mi for this to make sense. In any case, there is a big why with Roger being the previous wielder of the fruit, and that is because in Odin's flashback, the Pirate King was not seen having the fruit's ability. Sure, Oda could have deliberately not shown this to us, after all, we didn't see Roger in an extended fight. Perhaps if we're blessed enough to see a flashback of Roger vs Zebek, maybe it'll be shown to us then. Zebek is, after all, considered to be Roger's more formidable rival, whom Roger had to fight using all his abilities. But, without knowing much about Zebek, could this figure be also considered as the previous holder of the fruit? There is, however, one figure whose lack of information benefits the most to be the previous owner of the Gomu Gomu no Mi, and that is Joy Boy. The recent Wano chapters really feel like we are getting closer and closer to finding out some of the series' biggest mysteries. One recent hint that we've got to one of these reveals is Kaido's mention of Joy Boy. Joy Boy, whose reveal feels to be soon upon us, is always one of the popular candidates for literally any new mystery in the series, especially ones concerning Luffy. Although his journey is unseen, Joy Boy has always been hinted to have parallels to Luffy, and Joy Boy, being a person who previously held the Gomu Gomu no Mi, would be a concrete parallel which could be added. And all of these ideas presented in this theory could be combined to complement each other, unless we're asking whether the Gomu Gomu no Mi is the product of a man-made experimentation or the fruit of a mysterious tree. For now, we can only speculate. But please share your thoughts as always in the comments below, and please don't forget to subscribe because we need to stretch the reach of our channel so that we can expand the number of our crewmates. And as always, thank you to our patrons who have helped make this video possible. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.